Hi everyone, Mary and Espresso Press Design. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to do another video with the uh, wax paper laminate because I want these two videos back to back because one was a new experiment. So I want to do the one that um, I had the original success with just in case the experiment doesn't work out but so far so good for me and I'll explain uh, I'll show you what I did the last time what I've done since then what you need precisely and then while we were I'm beginning this technique and waiting for things to dry I will go through and show you some things I've done with this in the past year or so and uh, hopefully give you some inspiration and with this particular one we're doing today um, I'm sure you will not have to worry about it so first of all you will need a Sizzix and I have a couple of shims I'm going to be using all three plates. My crappy plates. The other day I meant my crappy die cut plates. My experiment plates. <laughs> so I'm going to be using the base. This one. And these two. And if I need it. And to protect the back of mine I will probably be using these shims so I'm not going to do this on the table I'm going to move my machine to where it normally is right here because it will probably shake the table and then shake the camera so you'll need some wax paper. Someone asked um, what side I did it on. Truthfully, I cannot see a difference between sides in wax paper. Maybe one is a tiny bit more dull, but since I never pay attention to that, I'm sure I've used both sides. I like to put my images on packaging preferably white but I do have one here that will need a back and I have already got started putting some images on here on my packaging and I ran them through the Sizzix once to make sure that the glue is nice and stuck and I did use glue stick for that but today I'm not using glue stick. I'm using glue. So um, you'll need your images, your base. I have a couple here I'm going to redo if I have time. Not redo, but put wax paper on if I have time. And they are just um, probably... They're not even as thick as an index card. So this might just be two digitals back to back. So I might try to do those if I have time. So um, you'll need a cloth to wipe your hands off. And you'll need a trimmer or a pair of scissors. And the glue I'm using today, let me sit down here. The glue I'm using today, because I know it turns out well and it dries clear, is Elmer's clear glue. Any clear glue should be fine. Um, I'm going to go over it. The glues I used the first time I did this experiment, and I began with my 
Linico book binding glue because I know everything sticks to it. It did not, it was a little milky when it dried. That's why I wanted to find a, something that would be more clear and that was also in part what led to experimenting with the glue stick because it does not leave so much of a film when it dries. So I tried tacky glue. Oh, that was that was not good. It's too thick. It takes too long to dry. So I abandoned that. I do believe I tried regular school glue, which is says it dries clear. And it does. I think I had pretty good success with that. So, oh, and I also tried um, acrylic medium. I think I had success with that. So I tried all as many as many adhesives adhesives as I could think of to do this. And those are just a few that I remember. So I have my images here. And then I'm going to show you that I did one without the, the Sizzix because I felt bad. When people can't participate because they don't have the equipment. And it's a little more time consuming. But it works. So usually, when I began, I, I just spread my glue out with my finger. But today I'm going to um, use my roller with some wax paper so I can get the coat as thin as possible. And that was my instructions. Get a very 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 thin coat so you're not waiting forever for it to dry and by the way this is my wax paper brand Reynolds cut right that I'm sure any will do so I'm just getting you could use plastic for this you could use um, what else? Parchment, you could use some um, freezer paper, even though that's expensive. So I'm just wiping that off, my excess glue, so that I don't have a ton of glue to wait to dry. And then I'm going to put my other piece on there. Actually, I meant to do this before, so I had one that was completely dry before I even started the video, and now it's, and then I forgot, because I had so many things to grab. So now I'm putting on my good layer of wax paper. And then I'll just put that aside. I'm just going to give it a quick roll here. So if your glue is not dry enough, because you have a layer of plastic coated packaging, a layer of paper, and then a layer of wax paper, when you put pressure on those layers, if they are too wet, everything is just going to slide in your press in the Sizzix. I'm using the word press for Sizzix, cuddle bug, whatever. Okay, put that aside here to dry. Get some glue on these.
and then I will give you a demonstration of all the things I've made. Some of them I don't have anymore. I just put one. Guess what? I just put one, one in uh, one of my curated kits. And um, guess what? That's my first one I sold. So let me just spread this out. And I'm so nervous about it. I don't know how people sell their stuff. Aside from the craft fair, I haven't. It really makes me nervous selling handmade stuff. It really does. So I'm praying she likes it. Oh, and guess and guess what else? In my boutique, Cherish, Cherish Resale Boutique on Shopify, my first item I sold apparently got lost in the mail. I've been trying to do a missing package for months. My 1880s um, English creamer, which I didn't even want to sell because I loved it. I'll never find another one, I'm sure. Yeah, I think it was pretty sure it was 1880s. That paper's bubbling a little. But it should be fine. Okay. I'm going to use the roller because I don't know. I don't. This glue is a little thick. And I really don't want it any slip sliding because I don't have any spare images here if I mess one up. Okay. That's thinner hopefully. Let me just move this. And we've got a bubble. Of my paper image. This is wet glue. Okay. Just gonna get that on there as best I can with the roller. Especially watching the corners. Okay. And let those dry while I go through here some of the things I've made in the past year. So now I have glue on my hands. <laughs> okay. Um, these are the ones we made the other day. I had one or two come off, and I'm quite sure it was probably the craft bond or the pen gear. Don't trust either one of those glues, glue sticks, quite frankly. These are still holding up. Here's the one that I put the glue on top to make your image more vibrant. Here's the napkin. I, I'm quite sure this will never go anywhere. So if you want to absolutely ensure success with the glue stick, do a napkin on a base and then your wax paper. Uh, these are new. I made a little car. 
Let me get these up here. These I did with the glue on top. Let me get these, view these up here more closely so you can see them. I know it's hard to see the wax. And I don't know if you're going to catch a shimmer there or not because... No, not on that one. Not on that one either. Because my light is so bright. It's hard to see. This is probably the only one because I crumpled the paper. So you can tell there's... Slightly tell there's something on top of there. But the thing is, is the feel, okay? The feel and the fact that you are preserving something and making it waterproof. So I did this little car. I did these with just glue, and I have these little calling cards, and I just put them on that and put the glue on top, but... They are so silky smooth. They remind me of old baseball cards. And um, you can't even tell that there's a piece of paper glued on there. That's how um, that's how much I pressed it. <laughs> so, and I did those by hand. And this is what I'm going to show you if you do not have a Sizzix. I'm going to show you how to do this one with glue. So you'll need, I used a cork that I have here for another purpose. And I used the edge of my printing block, stamp block, because it's nice and smooth. I didn't want, I didn't want to gouge with anything. I wanted something nice and smooth. Okay, so I made all those. I made some postcards with a um, kind of Kodak style. I did another dictionary page and this one I just used the cork and I don't think that's coming apart. I, I'm, I'm almost a hundred percent certain you'll never have a problem with book pages and glue stick between whoops between two pieces of wax paper just a second, I dropped that. Okay. And, okay, I might, if I might do that today. I made a postcard. And I just want to show you the difference between them. Especially when you're doing something that's just paper. That's wax. And I put that on the back of uh, scrapbook paper. Okay, so there's all that. These are just on, that's just cardstock. And that is a index card, craft paper index card. Oh, and this one, I put some flecks of glitter in there. Chunky glitter. It's hard to see. You're not there. Put some chunky glitter. I wish I would have used silver because then it would look like pewter. Okay, what else did I do? I've made bags with these in the past. This is wax paper on top of a digital. And then I embossed it. It's not coming apart anywhere. Makes nice sturdy little bags to keep your ephemera in. I've done 
postcards that I've been bossed. Let me stand up. Some postcards and then emboss them. And it looks like ice. This one I went the wrong way, so that's debossed. So I've done these. They're still here, nothing's coming apart. And this is one of my all-time favorites, and I, um, I have another one and I can't find it. So that's a coffee dye book page, and I fussy cut some pansies, and then I emboss from here to here so that I could have the uh, emboss on the top part and this is smooth so that's one of my favorite things ever and I have two of them and I can't find the other one it took me forever to find that one it's probably tucked in a book or something this one is definitely not dry enough so this one still feels cool as well. So I'm going to do the butterfly. And I'll have to sit here and rub it in as long as possible. So that'll give me a few more minutes. If I run those through right now, I'd be afraid because they still feel very cool so let me try to get the smallest amount of glue on here as possible I should use my roller to spread it out but um, then I have to clean all that glue off my roller I don't like doing that So, when you're doing little things like this, it's pretty easy to get a very thin, thin coat. I know you can't see that, but that's like a hair thin. Okay. So this is the method without a press. Because I understand, I hate I generally try to avoid doing videos where anyone has to buy anything aside from the normal craft items. So I just took my cork and I kept rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. I, I really I just wanted something that would could give me some concentrated but even pressure I'll show you here with the stamping block oh wait one more thing you might be able to use your um, the top of your glue if it's smooth which mine is and actually you know this method if you don't mind sitting here a while <laughs> it works fine that's how I did that little car this little car and actually that feels almost dry already so see with a small item it's 
it's not hard to get your glue thin. And you want it, I'm going to say to like the tacky stage, but even that is probably not dry enough. <laughs> and it's very hard to explain what almost dry means when it comes to this. But just trust me, I've torn, it, torn enough sheets that I know when it's too wet. That still feels very cool. Let's see if I can press some more glue out. That still feels cool. Okay. But I guarantee with this method, nothing will be going anywhere. If you missed a corner, see I missed a corner. Just going to go back in. Redo it. That one's sticking pretty well already. When when it's when it's ready, you will barely be able to lift it. I mean, you still can if you force it, but you'll be able to tell it's it's already almost stuck. It's just the press pressure from the Sizzix. You know that that will pretty much guarantee it stuck. Okay, maybe I'm gonna try this. I can't remember. I think I which one did I do first? I honestly can't remember. Okay, I'm going to be brave. I'm just going to run it through with um, three, three plates and no shims so I don't put too much pressure. And it doesn't matter on this one because I have to put a new back on it anyway because the packaging is not white. Okay, it didn't slide. I'm going to run it through again because I see a bubble. So I might use a shim this time. Here goes. That's too big of a shape. Why are you not going? The shim is a little too thick. Get a thinner one. I did tear my wax paper a little bit. The one, the part that was off the image. I'm sure it has a bunch of glue underneath it. That's why, because all the glue squeezed out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a little, little sliding there on the edge of that image because it's too wet. It's 
So that's a good. I'm going to show you that. Oh, it didn't tear the image. Just the wax paper slid a little. Okay. It didn't tear though. Let me see. This still feels a little cool. But I guess I'm going to try it. This one pretty much feels dry already. Let's see, nothing's coming up. I'll trim that. Maybe I'll trim that first and then give that a little more time to dry. Where are we? 32. Give that a little more time to dry. I don't want to do all this work for you and not have it come out right. Get a flat edge here, a straight edge, I mean. Okay. I would just feel really bad if you didn't have success. So. I want to guarantee, I want these videos to be back to back. I wanted to do this from my originals. That's not going anywhere. That's beautiful. Oh, and I, I wish I could describe how they feel, but I can't. So these were my originals. I've had these well over a year. I just wanted to redo this video because I get getting too many comments and I realized I could probably explain it better. That's beautiful. I wish you could see that and that clear glue does, there's a little bit of the shimmer. Okay, I'm glad you can finally see that. So, if you want to take the time, there's no reason why you can't do that. Okay. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. Feels... It still feels a little cool. Okay, here we go. And this is long, so I have to turn it around. So far, so good. Except what I don't like, you know, my crappy plate. Sorry I said that. That got lost in translation apparently. I just meant, um, you know, slightly damaged plate from so much die cutting. What happened? 
like part of this one is too too dry and it didn't even stick at all. Okay, one is too dry. Part of it is too dry. And the other one is completely stuck. Okay, it still feels soaking wet. So now I have to put some more glue on this one. The other one is stuck. And hope this doesn't tear. Apparently, I waited too long for one and not long enough for the other one. Okay, just going to run it through. This one's completely stuck. Feel some wrinkling. Here's my cork. That works really nice to get wrinkles out. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I know, I'm pretty sure this one did. So let me just get this trimmed. I might have a corner. Might have a corner to repair. What I don't like is I, I wish I would have, I can feel the texture from those plates. I'd rather not feel that texture. I'd rather have it be nice and smooth. Okay, that one won't be going anywhere. Let me go over it with the cork. See if I can get that out. I have a big bubble there. And I have a corner. So again, if you if you just want a protective coating, just put some glue on it. Go over it with wax paper. There won't be any brush marks or anything. Lift off the wax paper. And the glue will put a nice coating. There, yeah, that's coming out. That texture, I mean, which I didn't want. OK, 
Okay, let me see if I can fix this bubble. So apparently it was too dry in some places. <laughs> I thought for sure that roller would give me a nice even coat there. But maybe finger method works better. Okay. No, that won't be going anywhere. There's one. Another one. I see if you can see that. Gorgeous. Okay, where's my um, other one? I know that won't be going anywhere. That's white. I could. Don't have an embossing folder beside me. I was going to say I could emboss that for you. Show you what that's like. Sure, if that's um okay. Thought that. Let me get the right edge of my image. I thought I had a, right, a white border around that image, but I don't. I have a border, but not white. I don't barely see. Okay, there's another little postcard and it has a lot of texture on it because I didn't have a protective. Let me see if I can get that out a little bit. I'm sure I could run it through again with the shim protection. Or a piece of paper or something and that they would come out maybe. If not, it's just gonna st stay textured. I think I have a corner too. Yeah. Another corner. It's completely dry. Okay, next time use just just spread it with your fingers. Finger. That worked better. I don't think I need the press to do this. Okay. Yeah, that's smoothed out quite a bit. Okay, one more to cut. And then this has texture too. So, so far I like the butterfly the best because it doesn't have texture at all. It's just nice and silky smooth. Trying to find my proper edge here. <laughs> I would have 
if I would have had that red the whole way around, I would have kept it. Okay. So I have a little corner where it wrinkled. Let me show you this now that it's completely dry. I guarantee it's not going anywhere. So there's your laminate without needing a Sizzix. Without needing a Sizzix. All you need is time. And patience. Do it on a flat surface. And do it on a flat surface. <laughs> that would look cute. If I did that. Okay. I still have a corner. Are you kidding me? Is that the same corner? Okay, I let that dry too much. So it just goes to tell you that, you know, <laughs> it's a fine line and it just takes practice to know when you're dry enough and when you're not. Okay. That's a lot smoother. Just have those little wrinkles on this side. There's that one. See if I get that, that one, and that one. That one has the most texture. And I think the nicest one of all is actually the butterfly. I got a very thin coat. The paper didn't wrinkle. Um, the wax paper didn't wrinkle. I spread it with my finger. It's very thin. I do have a little corner. Tiny, tiny corner. Now I did not try this with the iron. If anyone wants to try that, be my guess. I might. But you know what my feeling is probably. Half the time I use heat to remove the stickers from glue or the glue from stickers. You know, when you buy something. I heat them up with my hair dryer. So I'm not sure what heat would do to glue. I, my feeling is it would just melt it and then everything would just come come up, come back up. Let's see if I can get this any smoother. It's bugging me. Because the reason I put the wax on in the first place is to make them smooth. And so they're so touchable. Seriously, they're so touchable. And these, I love this. I love this. I love my postcards. Love my postcards. You can do, I'm pretty sure you can get away with just using your hand pressure to do book pages between two sheets of wax paper. Someone asks, is it, is it as stiff as laminate? No, it's not as stiff as laminate. 
not even close. The stiffness depends on your backing. This is fairly stiff because I think that's bolder. This is very stiff because it's packaging. So it depends on your back how stiff it gets. And then there's my other new cards I made with um, I use glue stick and that. So okay everyone I think this is <laughs> the most comprehensive I can remember to do this technique so it should work for everyone in some form or fashion. And if all else fails, uh, if you want a guaranteed, even with the glue stick, I would probably recommend running it through an embossing folder as well. Just choose one with simple little dots or something. And uh, then you shouldn't have to worry about it at all, even if you do use a glue stick. So that would be my recommendation. And then this is, um, you can, it looks like vellum after it's embossed. You can see the white. So, okay, everyone, thank you so much for your time. And I hope you find this helpful, useful, enjoyable, fun. Save your clippings, save your old papers that are falling apart. I know for my own part, I have, since I'm the family archivist, I probably have boxes of newspaper clippings that I really should do for my own family keepsakes. Okay, thanks again everyone. Bye.